Authorities said she was in a creek with zip ties around her wrists and a chain around her waist. Investigators are working the case as a homicide. She was identified through fingerprints. There are no suspects at this time. Now, police have made an arrest in the fatal shooting of a Marshall man late Monday night. According to Marshall Police, officers were called to investigate multiple reports of gunshots being fired off of Elsie Street around 11.35 p.m. with at least one possible victim. Now, police say the victim is identified as Tayshun Darty. He passed away at the hospital due to his injuries. Officers arrested 20-year-old 20, 20 Nathan Nate Irving. He's been booked into the Harrison County Jail on a charge of murder. This investigation is ongoing. Shreveport City Council continues their debate over the clean city user fee to give garbage uh, workers raises. NBC6's Julius Kidzi joins us now live from Mansfield Road with more. Julius? Well, Dan and Jackie, that meeting was actually about Sergeant Michael Carter and his position on the Civil Service Board, and that meeting actually ended just behind me about 30 minutes ago. Now, Chief Ben Raymond of the Shreveport Police Department, he's actually asking Sergeant Michael Carter to move into a role in HR, which will compromise his role with the Civil Service Board. Now, back to the meeting today, Carter went in front of his board on Tuesday discussing he feels he's being targeted for his position on the board. Now, Carter says he is being discriminated against because of his position on the Civil Service Board and the matters that he actually deals with. Now, Chief Raymond actually asked Carter to be in the HR department back in December to hopefully make a change in the department. Now, Raymond also says he's the most qualified person in the entire department for the job. Now, Carter served in HR back in 2004, but also denied the opportunity in 2000. Now, he strongly disagrees with the board's final decision, which was 6-2, to two, saying the chief acted in good faith and he will ultimately move to human resources. No, I expected the board members to be more reasonable. Uh, you know, some of them have, um, have seen what I've went through. They've seen what I've been through with other uh, chiefs and other uh, city attorneys and administrations. There's a reason why the last administration is not here. They tried this. They tried this, and they're no longer the mayor. They're no longer the city attorney. And I guess now it's time for this administration to go down the same road. Now, the Civil Service Board also removed legislation to have Chief Raymond removed from his position as provisional police chief, something that, that was actually put on the agenda by Sergeant Carter. And Carter's appeal, he says, will go to the first judicial district court on a later date. Dan and Jackie, back to you. Thank you, Julius. Well, the man accused in a January double homicide in Bossier City was in district court today to establish how his court-appointed defense attorneys will be paid. Frederick Jackson is charged with two counts of first-degree murder in the January shooting of 22-year-old Chandrell Simino and her mother, 40-year-old Maisha Simino. It happened inside of their apartment on Misty Lane. Funding sources will depend on whether Bossier District Attorney Skylar Marvin will seek the death penalty, which will determine who ultimately represents Jackson. Judge Michael Craig stayed the proceeding until April the 1st. Another day in court for Michael Tyler, the Louisiana rapper known as Mystical. Today, the prosecutor and defense agreed to move Mystical's trial, which was originally set for August 5th. The date has changed because of the prosecutor's schedule. Tyler was behind bars for 18 months in connection to first-degree rape and second-degree kidnapping charges. He was able to post a $3 million bond in February. He's confident in his legal team. You know, confident, confident. confident. You gotta, to eat an elephant, you got to bite it one bite at a time, don't you? Yeah, one bite at a time, so. <laughs> the trial date is scheduled for, well, excuse me, will be decided in May. Tyler's attorneys say it will be pushed back to sometime in the fall. Now, in Shreveport, a man is behind bars after drugs and guns are discovered inside of his home. On Friday, 25-year-old Gerard R. Antwine was arrested after a search warrant was executed on Melrose Street. Officers seized more than 3,800 ecstasy and meth tablets, over 200 grams of marijuana, 33 grams of THC oil, 1 gram of powdered cocaine, 16 grams of crack cocaine, and three firearms. He was booked into the Cannell Correctional Center for a charge of possession with the intent to distribute. A Texarkana High School student is behind bars tonight after police say he brought a gun to campus. Police say 17-year-old Ladarius Forte was stopped by Liberty ILO ISD officers when he entered school grounds. Officers were investigating a domestic dispute between the student and his girlfriend, reported by Wake Village Police last night. Police say after they searched him, they found a gun, which was also stolen property. Unfortunately now, you have a kid that because he's 17 and, and you bring it onto school property, it's a whole other set of problems. Um, so he made a series of, of very poor choices that now are going to follow him for a long time. 
The teen was booked into Dubai State Jail as an adult. He now faces charges for bringing a weapon to campus and possession of stolen property. He was also immediately expelled. Money Matters in Arkansas Congressman Bruce Westerman spent the day in Texarkana, his first stop, a company which says it has plans to expand in the area. NBC6's Heather Wright shares more. Union Tank Car in Texarkana, Arkansas has plans for growth. We're looking to do an additional third shift in the near future. Welcome news to Arkansas Congressman Bruce Westerman as he tours the facility. I'm excited that they're actually expanding. Union Tank Car Company repairs, manufactures, and leases rail cars. The Texarkana plant's new manager hopes to add 50 new jobs over the next few months. We're actually hiring up now. I've got nine openings as we speak. The company hiring some displaced workers from nearby Red River Army Depot. About 900 people were laid off there last year due to lack of workload. Westerman says he and representatives from neighboring states continue to lobby for more work for that facility. We all kind of uh, come together to do the best we can to make sure that that facility remains operational. Meanwhile, at a luncheon with local business leaders, the congressman discusses a feasibility study to make the Red River navigable from Shreveport, an environmental assessment on the Sulphur River and the need to complete Interstate 49. We've got to get a bridge across the Arkansas River and then get that, uh, the interstate down through the western part of the state. And I think that'll be great. Uh, for the country and for the region, and especially for residents in that corridor. Heather Wright, NBC6 News.